people of the internet, it's Amanda and I'm super excited for today's video because we're going to be talking about Kanojo Akiredata or She Was Pretty, the Japanese version adapted from a Korean drama of the same name. Now, I didn't really have plans to like watch the original Korean version but when this version was announced I was pretty excited about it so I ended up watching that one and you know how like even if obviously I know that I'm gonna like the Japanese version better <laughs> biases obviously but um, I I couldn't help but like compare some of the scenes here and there and I really really love this adaptation so much. I feel like even fans of like the K-drama would really enjoy what they did with this version and I feel like just generally if you want something to recommend to someone who's new to J-dramas this would be a good start and I'll be talking more about that later like the reasons and the things and the changes that they did in terms of the plot that I really really like. For that reason, Real quick, let's talk about sponsor of today's video, Nyokyo. So I've talked about them in past videos before. Um, they're a Japanese online proxy service where you can basically shop for goods from Japanese stores and Japanese sellers from their website. So especially if they don't deliver directly to your country. Now they've been running a couple of campaigns here and there that is really up my alley. So I'll be putting a link to my videos on them down in the description below. But what I want to talk about today is their second-hand shopping service so one thing that you can also do on their website is you can look up second-hand goods or merch or stuff like that so for example if this drama got you hooked on sexy zone because of Nakajima Kento or awesome city club because of the opening theme of the drama you can just look up both groups and you can find past singles or past merch related to these groups and you can just Go ahead and click on it there are a lot of like sellers on here where you can find you know even bundles of stuff like because obviously they're from um seller or like former customers selling their items as well so you can find pretty good deals here and there about them um and I, I what I like about Nyokyo is even like promos from convenience stores and pamphlets and stuff like that which you don't usually find in typical stores they also have this on their website so they charge 250 yen per item if you use their proxy service and um, you can store your products for 45 days for free once they arrive in Nokio's warehouse and you know it's so easy to just consolidate everything once they're all there shop for from different sites different sellers here and there and just have it shipped to your place i've tried their service a couple of times before talked about those experiences as well all of the necessary stuff i'll be putting it down in the description below now without further ado let's get to the video seen the whole template before when it comes to you know it's it's like a, an unfashionable girl entering the world of fashion and beauty and stuff like that i mean i can attest to the fact that it does happen because i myself like when i started with my actual job which is also related to fashion and beauty like i was also sort of like a noob in that department but somehow you just learn along the way and that's really how it is so um i can sort of like relate to these types of stories and that's why i really really like them even if you know i've seen them in a couple of like works here and there but basically the story revolves around sato ai which is played by Koshiba Fuka, who I'm really, really happy that I discovered in this drama. Um, she's, you know, she's described as an unconventional beauty, or if we were to be very blunt about, you know, how it's taken in the plot, she's not pretty at all, she's ugly, not really, but yeah. Um, and she's close friends, or really, really close friends, with Sakuma Yui's um, character Risa. Now they have a very nice close bond. Risa is the more like fashionable one. She works as a restaurant manager and yeah and um, Sato Ai has a childhood friend exactly. back when they were younger so um, I was the pretty girl and then Sosuke was the fat awkward kid um, and he's portrayed as someone who you know doesn't really have a lot of friends but somehow 
he ends up being friends with this pretty girl and they get along really well and they are actually each other's first loves um, and they decide to like meet all over again now that they're adults but then when I see um, Sosuke, he's all, you know, handsome now, you know, the conventional, you know, handsome guy, stuff like that, played by Nakajima Kento. So um, she kind of feels like she would disappoint him with how she looks like. Um, and so she tells her friend to meet him instead and to pretend that, you know, sh her friend Lisa is Sato Ai. It was supposed to be like a one-time thing, but somehow um, I lands a job in a publishing company, a magazine, um, in the editorial department of a mag of a fashion magazine. Um, and <laughs> apparently, Sosuke is the new deputy editor of the uh, magazine. So they still meet, but she doesn't she doesn't know that. Um, because of a certain accident, like um, Sosuke still ends up keep seeing Risa and thinks that Risa is I, for, like the whole idea of like mistaken identity. And he's kind of annoyed with I because he, she shares the same name as you know his first love and childhood friend. Um, but somehow they, he still finds something very familiar about her something like that and then enters the second lead which is played by Akaso Eiji who um, is Higuchi in this plot and what's interesting is right off the bat Higuchi and I get along they become really good friends and it was implied that even in the early stages when I was still not pretty so Higuchi already likes her for her you know the whole like cliche idea thing but somehow Higuchi ends up meeting Risa and finds out about this entire business with Sosuke of her pretending all that so it usually takes you know the, it, it took the same route as it did with the Korean version um, and overall I feel like they really got the main points of the Korean version well so if you're sort of like an, a purist when it comes to like original version versus, you know, an adaptation, I feel like this is something that you really, really like. But what I absolutely love about this is even if they change some parts in, in the narrative, it still worked and for the better. So for one, some of the minor characters they didn't get as much spotlight as they did in the K-drama, which is understandable since the K-drama has 16 episodes, I think, and then this one only has 10. So obviously they have to cut a lot off. But the insertions that they did, sort of like putting some spotlights or highlights in some of the side stories, did really well. And it really slashed down a lot of unnecessary stuff or unnecessary fluff from the original to make this one work and to still have a cohesive plot for this adaptation, which I really, really like. Um, some of the like bigger moments in this adaptation was improved in my opinion. Like number one, there was a there was a moment where I quit or she was she felt, you know, she had to she had to like end her employment because of a big issue at work. Now, in the Korean version, the reason why she ended up leaving the job was because Sosuke, the character of Sosuke in the Korean version, was getting iffy about her and her sharing the same name as the Sato Ai that he was actually in love with, his childhood friend, and somehow he finds her confusing and she is kind of like clumsy with her job and everything like that. And so, because of all his emotions that's what ends up you know him telling her that she's fired from her job but then in the japanese version it's a lot more different it's it's more professional in a way that i took responsibility for something that an incident that happened related to their work and sosuke as much as possible that he wanted to protect her he took the more professional route and just gave in with what the client wanted and allowed I to just leave without, you know, without even defending her. So I think it's more rational and logical that way, like how the Japanese version wrapped 
around like did that particular storyline um the whole idea with higuchi talking to to sasuke about the idea was also a lot more better handled as compared to like the korean version um so i really really like that change another change that i like was higuchi's backstory as um one of the characters who ends up being significant in the plot so higuchi's backstory as compared to like the backstory that was told in the um, Korean version, I feel like both are really, really good. It tells a lot about um, different cultures and just um, being in a system when it comes to, you know, ch uh, foster care and everything like that. So I really like the take for each version. Um, I like that in the end, when Sosuke and I was talking about, you know, with Sosuke wanting to go back to the headquarters in New York after everything was sorted. Um, in the Korean version, I Ai's character in the Korean version just sort of like accepted it in a way, even if she's she's not really feeling it. But then for this one, I and Sosuke had a little bit of like a fight because I felt like Sosuke was deciding for her, um, and Sosuke felt like um, he was being considerate of Ai's feelings initially. So I feel like that conflict was a lot more reasonable as compared to how consensual everything was in the Korean version. I feel like in the Korean version, because of so many conflicts that already happened in the plot throughout the 16 episodes, they wanted to make the last few moments a lot more mellow. But I feel like for this one, it really, really worked. Like, so I really like that change as well. I feel like the way that Fuka and Kento acted that particular scene was also really powerful and really nice. Like their exchange, it wasn't over the top, but at the same time, um, it was also very well delivered. And a lot of the nuances in their acting really showed that, you know, like they're trying to restrain themselves from like, I don't know, like it, it was just really, really nicely delivered. Um... I really like the time skips in the end as to how they delivered a conclusion for basically everybody. Um, it wasn't like in the Korean version, which again, because that puts so much in terms of um, the side stories of the other characters, so they had to give some sort of like a payoff for everyone else. I think for this one, the final episode, it gave a happy ending for the characters who needed them, but it didn't really dwell a lot on the characters that were sort of like given their own storylines, but then were a little bit more minor. So it focused, it really had a lot more time developing and focusing more on the conclusion of, of the main cast or the main characters and it made a lot more sense it made a lot more impact because we cared about these characters in the end um a lot more because just like the focal point of the story is on them so i really really like that um what's interesting about this is i really like how the friendship between risa and i was reinforced a lot like how close they were but didn't really dwell a lot more on how far back they they were together or anything like that mainly because i feel like the main tension in the korean version was um the character of risa and i in the korean version they've been friends ever since they were i don't know like really really young so for risa's character in the korean version to be able to do that to i <laughs> that flat level of betrayal was kind of like very iffy whereas for this one because we know that they're close friends and we know the bond that they have but it's not like like it's so easy it's not it's not really easy but it's a lot more understandable to get angry at Risa um, but you kind of understand why she's acting the way she acted whereas for the korean version it's a lot more painful to watch in a way because they are a lot closer in that like they're portrayed a lot closer in the korean version as compared to you know the japanese version um but and another thing is i think because risa's story like we get hints here and there about you know her story and how she 
she she goes on and off with like different relationships and stuff like that she has an issue with her father or anything like that i feel like just in that respect in terms of her character the korean version obviously it had a lot more time to flesh that out but it still did a good job in terms of giving justice to her character so that's fine um but i really like how in japanese versions and japanese adaptations because of the limited number of episodes they usually just zoom in on the main um, characters or them and developing them and developing their story a lot and so until the end you really love seeing that kind of payoff while still it not feeling so stretched out and there's not a lot of fluff and that's what i really love about this particular version now when i mentioned in the beginning of the video that i feel like it's a good primer for those who are new to j-drama i feel like it's because it's easy to consume there's not a lot of like weird moments where sometimes some j-dramas it has to fit their cup of tea or you have to be used to j-dramas for you to be able to um appreciate it like for example hanayori dango um given the plot of that it can be a little bit more dated the way that they also um did a lot of exaggerations in that particular drama so um it is like an old-time favorite but if you have someone new to like watch it without having a primer to j-dramas at all it can get a little bit weird for them but i feel like kanajoa keredata is definitely a nice a nice primer drama to anyone who's new to the genre to new to j drama um i feel like they would definitely enjoy it um it's a good gateway j drama and obviously like you have a lot of options as to where you want to turn next with you know nakajima kento starring in it there's koshiba fuka starring in it there's Higuchi, um there's um akasa ag starring in it so after that you can slowly have the per like the new person to like branch out into the projects of each of these casts i feel like it's also well casted i really really i really really love how it is um and yeah i feel like again this is a drama that i highly recommend um especially for those who are not into very um i don't know how to explain but very like weird um j dramas or j dramas that really tap into like very weird narratives and stuff so this is like a very nice light-hearted watch and i highly recommend it so yeah with that said tell me down in the comments below what are your thoughts on this drama do you like it um do you plan to watch it anything like that so let's talk it out down in the comments below as usual if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me please hit subscribe thank you so much for watching this video and i hope to see you again soon in a new one